Okay, so I'm going to read chapter 16, Sexually Transmitted Affection. This book, Human Sexuality in a World of Diversity, um, 9th edition, Spencer A. Oh, let me read them. Who cares? What? Spencer A. Rappus, Jeffrey S. Nevid, Lois Fitchner Rappus. Um... So I'm going to start by reading the whole chapter 16. Um, chapter 16, Sexually Transmitted Infection. Mm. I know this is kind of like copyright, but... Um, um, I showed you the book. I'm just going to read it out loud. Okay. Sexually Transmitted Infections, Learning Objectives, Epidemic, Describe some of these are the learning objectives. Describe some of the features of the current epidemic of sexually transmitted infections, bacterial infections. Discuss the transmission effects and treatment of gonorrhea. Discuss the transmission effects and treatment of syphilis. Discuss the transmission effects and treatment of chlamydia. Discuss the transmission effects and treatment of other bacterial STIs. Vaginal infections, discuss the, trans the transmission effects and treatment of various vaginal infections, viral infections, transmission effects, treatment, HIV, AIDS, discuss transmission effect, treatment, genital herpes, transmission effect, treatment, human papillomavirus, transmission effects, treatment, other viral STIs. And then we'll talk about ectoparasitic infestations. Discuss transmission effects treatment of ectoparasitic infestations. And then at the end, we'll talk about my life, my sexuality, talking with your partner about STIs. Harold and Corinne, both 20, have been dating for several months. They feel strong sexual attraction toward each other, but have hesitated to become sexually intimate because of fears about HIV and AIDS and other sexually transmitted infections. Harold believes that using condoms is no guarantee against infection and wants the two of them to be tested for HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Karen has resisted undergoing an HIV test, partly because she feels insulted that Harold fears that she may be infected and frankly, <clears throat> partly in fear of the test results. She has heard that symptoms may not develop for years after infection. She wonders whether she might have been infected by one of the men with whom she had slept in the past. Keisha has genital herpes, a 19-year-old pre-law student. She has had no recurrences since the initial outbreak two years earlier, but she knows that herpes is a lifelong infection and may recur periodically from time to time. She also knows that she may inadvertently pass the herpes virus along to her sex partners, even to the man she eventually marries. <clears throat> She has begun thinking seriously about Steve, a man she has been dating for the past month. She would like to tell him that she has herpes before they become sexually intimate. Yet, she fears that telling him might scare him off. Jose, 21, a math and computer science major, is planning a career in computer operations, hoping one day to, tur to run the computer systems for a large corporation. He lives off campus with several of his buddies in a rundown house they've dubbed the nuclear dump site. He's been dating Maria, a theater major, for several months. They have been they have begun having sexual relations and ha have practiced safer sex, at least most of the time. During the past week, he noticed a burning sensation while urinating. It seems to have passed now, so he figures that it was probably nothing to worry about. But he's not sure and wonders whether he should see a doctor. Harold, Karen, Keisha, and Jose expressed some of the fears and concerns of a generation of young people who are becoming sexually active at a time when the threat of HIV and AIDS and other sexually transmitted infections, STIs, hang over every sexual decision. Epidemic. Sexually transmitted infections are rampant. HIV AIDS is indeed a scary thing, a very scary thing. Yeah, it is. But HIV AIDS is only one of many STIs and other STIs actually pose wider threats. There are some 19 million new cases of STIs in the United States each year. The incidence of chlamydia has been increasing for the past 20 years, mostly undiagnosed. There are more than 700,000 new cases of gonorrhea each year, and the drug-resistant strains of gonorrhea are evolving. About 1 in 6 Americans is infected with herpes simplex virus 
otherwise known as HSV2. There are some 6 million new cases of human papilloma virus, HPV, each year, and more than 50% of some college populations are infected. There are about 50,000 new cases of HIV AIDS in the United States each year. College students have become reasonably well-versed about HIV AIDS, however, many are unaware that chlamydia can go undetected for years. Moreover, if it is left untreated, it can cause pelvic inflammation and infertility. Pelvic inflammatory disease, 2011, oh, that's just a sighting. Many college students appear to be ignorant about HPV and its links to genital warts, cervical cancer, even cancer of the throat. Um, Chaturvedi. But the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that as many as 6 million new cases of HPV infection occur each year in the United States, more than syphilis, genital herpes, and HIV AIDS combined. Whereas about 1 million Americans are thought to be infected with HIV, an estimated 50 to 60 million are infected with other STI causing viruses such as those causing herpes, hepatitis, and cervical cancer. Sexually transmitted infections are infections that can be communicated through sexual contact. Sexually transmitted infections are transmitted through sexual means such as vaginal or anal intercourse or oral sex. They were formerly called sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, and before that, venereal diseases, VDs after Venus, the Roman goddess of love. We refer to them as sexually transmitted infections because a person can be infected before developing a disease. Human papillomavirus, HPV, for example, is an organism that infects people. Genital warts and cancers are the kinds of diseases that can, be, that can develop from infection. Some STIs can be spread through non-sexual contact as well. For example, HIV, AIDS, and viral hepatitis may be spread by sharing communicated hypodermic syringes such as those used by people shooting up drugs, and a few STIs such as the parasitic, parasitic infection we sometimes refer to as crabs may be picked up from bedding or other objects such as moist towels. The United States is believed to have the highest rate of infection by STIs in the industrialized world. In a recent year, for example, 101 cases of gonorrhea were reported per 100,000 people in the United States. STI surveillance, uh, just a sighting, as compared with 18.6 per 100,000 in Canada and per 100,000 in Sweden. At least one in four Americans is likely to contract an STI at some time. Two cases and three occur in people under the age of 25. Do not read the remainder of this paragraph unless you are ready for the truth. Some of you readers have STIs and do not realize it. But ignorance is not bliss. Some STIs do not produce noticeable symptoms, but can be harmful if left untreated. STIs can also be painful, and in the cases of HIV AIDS, advanced syphilis, and the cervical cancer that can follow an infection with HPV, lethal. Hundreds of thousands of women become infertile each year because of STIs that are spreading through their reproductive system. Overall, STIs are believed to account for 15 to 30 percent of cases of infertility among women. Yeah, that's a lot. In addition to their biological effects, STIs exact wait, STIs exact an emotional toll and strain relationships to the breaking point. Um, who is at risk? Evidence suggests that young people are more sexually active than ever before. Thus, it is as important as ever that they be aware of the risks involved and take responsibility for their sexual health. Why the surge in the incidence of STIs? <laughs> one, is, one is the increased number of young people who have sex. Many of them fail to use latex condoms consistently, if at all. Some people do not use condoms because the woman is on the pill or using another form of hormonal birth control. Although hormonal methods of birth control are reliable forms of contraception, they do not prevent STIs. Another reason is that people with some infections, such as chlamydia, are symptom-free. Therefore, they may unwittingly transmit them to others. Other sex factors include early sexual involvement and sex with multiple partners. 
Drug use is also associated with an increased drug use is also associated with an increased risk of STIs. People who abuse drugs are more likely than others to engage in risky sexual practices. Moreover, certain forms of drug use, such as needle sharing, can directly transmit infectious, infectious organisms like HIV. Another risk factor, ironically, is the apparent success of new antiviral drugs in treating but not curing HIV or AIDS. As a result, many individuals who had become more cautious in their sexual behavior have once again thrown caution to the wind. Let's stop there.